Thank you, Vera. I'm delighted to introduce the next speaker, Dr. Henning Stark. He worked previously at the University Hospital in Leisbeck and Hanover Medical School in 2020. He joined the Heart and Diabetes Center team in Bad Munhausen. His scientific interests um, are focused on uh, thoracic anesthesia and here especially in the field of non-intubated vets. On the other hand, he also deals with uh, high risk and risk adjusted service strategies in elevated uh, field. And he will talk about uh, he will talk about area risk stratification and the strategy for right heart failure as an approach from Pat Oinhausen. And uh, I am delighted to share your slides, Dr. Henning. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Eltahan, also for the invitation to speak here in the context of the ACTA Examina. It's the first time for me, so thank you very much. The title of the talk is Early Risk Stratification and Strategy, we call it ERSAS, for right ventricular failure in LVID implantation. So the content of the talk today is at first a view of the basic data of um, right ventricular failure in LVID implantation and after a short switch to the pathophysiology where we pointed out some differences in the uh, right and left ventricle, I would like to show you how we do the risk stratification and develop a risk adjusted strategy here in the HD set. So the basic data, the right ventricular failure is um, defined according to the ITEMAX as uh, you meet an elevated CVP. It don't matter if you measure it by catheter or you see it in a clinical kind of way. And you need additionally an, a clinical signs of elevated CVP like peripheral edema or ascites, abnormal laboratory results or something else. And it's uh, divided into a mild, moderate, and severe stadium. And that depends mostly on the onset and duration and the need for kind of therapies uh, to manage this right ventricular failure. And if you look into the uh, literature, you find some incidences as well as in our center of uh, 20 and 40% in uh, patients who were undergoing Albert implantation. And um, the right ventricular failure almost is depending on the preoperative RV function, the indications for the VRB, and uh, the endocrine failures, failures which may um, also uh, are pre-existent. So, um, we have to ask ourselves, is there an impact on outcome of right ventricular failure? And uh, for example, in this study investigating nearly 500 patients, you can see very well that the patients, uh, no matter what kind of right ventricular failure they developed, had a longer stay in hospital, they had a lower rate of recovery or transplant options, and they had even a higher um, mortality. So, and mortality rate was even higher when the RVID was implanted in an emergency setting. You can see this here by this Kaplan-Meier curve. So if the right ventricular assist device was inserted as in, a, in a planned way, you see the uh, survival rate is nearly 50%, which is quite bad. But if it's uh, inserted in an in a emergency kind of way, the survival rate is only 20%. So to answer the question, yes, it's had a very great impact on the outcome of these patients. So the reasons for the um, right ventricular failure are not quite well known, but the most, uh, but pr the probably most ma mentioned answer is uh, surely the um, uh, increased afterload of the right ventricle. But of course, in the context of cardiothoracic anesthesia, we have to deal also with the preload and the contractility of the right ventricle. And when we look to the sheet of data of the study I showed before, you can easily see that the parameters who indicate the right ventricular afterload are not different between the two groups uh, of those patients who had no right ventricular failure and those who had a ventricular, right ventricular failure. But uh, the right ventricular stroke work, uh, stroke work index was a significant difference. So maybe there is a role for the contractility of the right ventricle to manage this right ventricular failure. Of course, there are other uh, not common but truly uh, um, confounders like tricuspid regurgitation or mechanical factors. And um, 
taken together, we not really show, uh, uh, we are not really sure what the reasons are, but as I mentioned, there's for sure a role for the contractivity. Okay.